Now we're going to take a look at the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide, so CO2. And that means it has one single carbon atom, which has four valence electrons. And we have an oxygen atom, which has six valence electrons, actually times two, because there's two of them, for 12 valence electrons plus four valence electrons, which gives us 16 valence electrons. So one of the checks will be to make sure we have 16 electrons involved in the bonding and the free electrons around the atoms. Uh, notice that carbon is, has the lowest electronegativity of the two atoms, so that will be the central structure. Notice there's two oxygen atoms, so we probably have a symmetry there. So we probably end up with something that looks like C on one side, oxygen over here, and oxygen over there. Now we're going to start out with a single bond. If we start out with a single bond, let's see if this works. Uh, since carbon has a total of four valence electrons, that would mean it has two electrons left. Uh, oxygen started with six. That means it used one for the bond. That means each oxygen would have five remaining, like so, and five remaining here, which right off the bat, I would say that is probably troublesome because you end up usually with, with an even number of free electrons for each atom. So that's probably not a good situation. On top of that, notice that the carbon does not follow the octet rule. We have two here, two there, and only two there. That's only six for carbon only seven for oxygen, seven for oxygen, so you probably say that is probably not a good fit. That's probably not the correct Lewis structure for the carbon dioxide. Notice that since carbon can make up to four bonds and has four valence electrons, and each of the oxygen needs two more electrons, and it can, it can be provided with two electrons if it makes two bonds instead of one, we can probably expect to see a double bond there. So let's try this whole thing with a double bond on each side. <coughs> Notice in that case, there's no free electrons on the carbon atom, so, so you end up with a linear structure for the atom because there's no electrons here, air to, here, here or there to make the electron bend in one way or the other. Uh, notice that if there's two bonds here and two bonds there, that means there's only four electrons left over here and four electrons left over there. If we do it like this, then we have the octet rule followed we have two, four, six, eight for the oxygen over there, two, four, six, eight for the oxygen over here, and eight electrons for the carbon at least part of the time because the atoms will, of course, have to share electrons to make these bonds. So it looks like from the octet rule, we have things satisfied. Now let's see if we have the proper number of electrons. We should have a total of 16. We have two and four, plus four over here, plus two, four, six, eight involved in bonding which is 8 plus 8, which is 16 electrons. And notice we have 16 electrons to start with, so the total number of electrons is satisfied as well. So it looks like we have the Lewis structure of our carbon dioxide molecule. And because of the symmetry, and because there's no electrons here or there, we can expect the physical structure of that molecule to be a linear molecule. Very important fact in terms of the importance of the carbon dioxide molecule. Anyway, that's how you draw the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide.